I will let you know this stock is very near and dear to my heart. <clears throat> I live in Wichita, and I make a lot of parts for Spirit at the place that I work for, at the, su at the supplier that I work for. So I am somewhat biased in that I hope that this company will do well, but at the same time, I also know this business plan better than most investors, even if they did their research, simply because I see POs coming from Spirit. I see their work increase over the past couple months compared to March, April, May, June of this year. We got no Spirit work, and we're a major supplier where I work at. I have friends that work at other suppliers within Wichita, and that's in different sectors and composites and machining and forming and welding and all sorts of different manufacturing processes, right? So, and I can tell you, Spirit, <laughs> they were ordering nothing. They were, I don't know what they made, but I think they made everything internally. That brings me to this article that was released today, October 1st, 2020, by the Wichita Eagle. That's the number one newspaper in Wichita. It says, Spirit Aerosystems tells workers it's closing McAllister, Oklahoma facility. Over the years, employees in McAllister supported the Apollo Space Program, military programs like the B-1B Bomber, and numerous commercial airplane initiatives, Gentile said. This decision is not a reflection of the work on the team in McAllister, Gentile wrote. Separately, the airline industry Thursday expected to furlough or lay off thousands of workers after Congress failed to reach a deal on a new pandemic relief package. American Airlines and United Airlines will begin, its, will begin to furlough 32,000 employees, the Associated Press reported. So with that, you would think that this would be a terrible time to invest in Spear, right? I mean, it looks like everything is just falling apart for the entire aerospace industry. Hold on a sec. Just hold on. We've got some good news recently that could that could change the stock price of Boeing and Spirit significantly in the short term and long term as well. This is current news from the FAA chief from yesterday, September 30th, 2020. Global regulators need to give their approval before the Boeing 737 MAX can return to service. The FAA, Transport Canada, and European Union's Aviation Safety Agency have, have completed Recertification flights this summer and are analyzing the data. EASA said last week that the grounded jet could get the, the OK in November to start flying again. That would potentially put it back into service by the end of the year. We're in the home stretch, but that doesn't mean we're going to take shortcuts to get it done by a certain date, Dixon said Wednesday. Boeing stock closed up 1% to 165.26 on the stock market today. Top Boeing 737 MAX supplier, Spirit Aerosystems, dipped 0.05%, and engine maker General Electric rallied 1.8%. Not only are we going to see the 737 MAX come back into service by the end of the year or beginning of next year, beginning of Q1 or Q2 2021, almost certainly by Q2, Spirit also came out with a $500 million debt offering. Here it says, Spirit Air Systems Holdings has priced its upsized offering of $500 million from $400 million of 5.5%. Senior secured first lien notes due 2025 in a private offering. Net proceeds will be used for general corporate purposes. Closing date is October 5th. Now, will I be purchasing shares of Spirit Air Systems? Yes. Now, will I be buying them this week? Absolutely not. I'm going to wait until after this offering, October 5th, see where the stock price is at. If it has gone down to 18, 17, which it potentially could, if Boeing doesn't go on a run here soon, I will be purchasing shares of Spirit Air Systems. So $500 million in a private offering. What can we take from that? Well, basically you can take that Spirit Air Systems is not going to be going anywhere. Net income before extraordinaries from the past five years. 2015, they made the most and $788.7 million to 2019, which would be $530.1 million. Their funds from operation is below. You can see they, they make anywhere between $820 million to $931 million of last year, which then funnels into their net income, as I discussed before. Now, $500 million, that's essentially their income from a, a whole year of operating. They just got that from a private offering. Now, why am I even more bullish on this? Let me explain. You've seen their net income. You've seen their funds from operations. Let's go to their liabilities now. Okay. You've seen their net income, and you've seen their funds from operations. Now check out their liabilities, short-term and long-term debt. Between 2015, it was $34.9 million, and in 2019, it grew to $56.2 million. 
So you're looking at $56.2 million in short-term debt and long-term liabilities. A whopping $2.35 billion from 2019. 2019 was a very, very good year for Spirit. And for aerospace in general, it was a very, very, very profitable year. $2.35 billion in cash and short-term investments from 2019. Reported 2019. That's an insane number. Okay, so let's see. You can see that their cash and short-term investments generally increases. Our 2015 is 957.3 million. It went down, went down to 2018. It came back to 773.9, and last year a whopping 2.35 billion. What does this tell us? This tells us that Spirit is not going anywhere. It's here for the long term. To prove my even further bullish point, let's just re read through their second quarter 2020 earnings re review. This is their presentation that they pre presented early August 2020. Um, you can see Tom Gentile is the president and CEO, and Mark Szynski is the senior vice president and CFO. So this is some of their recent actions. Um, they were directed by Boeing to produce only 72 737 ship sets in 2020, which they, create the, they build the entire fuselage for the 737 MAX, which, as you can imagine, is... Very difficult as well as it's a lot of work. Um, it's very big um, and it's very round. These lodges are generally very round. Implemented additional workforce adjustments, total cost reduction, a um, uh, minute credit agreement to provide covenant relief through 2022. That's a huge deal. Delivered the 10th CK, CH-53K fuselage. Allocated $80 million to Defense Production Act Title III funding by Department of Defense. Announced collaboration with Virgin Hyperloop to produce uh, prototype, announced partnership with Arion, and conducting continued production of ventilators with Viair produced and shipped several thousand to date. That's for the pandemic. Free cash flow. Okay, you can see in Q2 of 2019, made $192 million in profit. That's good. All right, 192. Q2 2020, hemorrhaged. I, mean, I don't know what other what other word you can say, but hemorrhaged. Two hundred and forty nine million dollars. Right? They're losing more money than they were gaining money when they were profitable. So obviously if they if this continues, they won't be around for very long. Total revenue, Q two nineteen would be two thousand million compared to Q two twenty twenty is six hundred forty five million. Yeah, it goes to <clears throat> state about production shutdowns at Boeing and Airbus, lower production on the seven thirty seven Max, uh, delivered a lot less ship sets. But you can see here their backlog at the end of Q2 is $41 billion for the work. That's huge. Where is Spirit going to go if they've got $41 billion backlogged and just work? I get that that's a lot of the 737 MAX, and if the 737 MAX, for some reason, never goes back into mass production, Spirit could be in trouble. So this is somewhat speculative investment, but I mean, the, I would give it 80-20. Uh, 80% spirit becomes what it was and even more in the future. And 20% they go bankrupt and someone else takes over um, for spirit in Wichita, which is their headquarters, and all, all around the world, which they have multiple different facilities in Malaysia and Mexico and, and North Carolina and Tulsa. It goes further on to kind of segregate each segment into what they were making previously in Q2 of 19 versus Q2 of 2020 now. So just for the fuselages for the 737 MAX, they made $1,097 million in revenue compared to only $327 million. Um, go down propulsion segment. In Q2 2019, they made $519 million compared to a measly $170 million this year in Q2. And for wings, um, they made $399 million last year compared to $123 million this year. So you can see all of their major assemblies, they have not produced at nearly the rate that they did last year for, for good reason, right? A little bit more about their financials. I've pulled up their annual revenue and their quarterly revenue based on the last 13 years. Right? The last 13 years. You can see 2019, almost $8 billion. Right? 20, 2019, almost $8 billion. 2018, $7 billion. 2017, $7 billion. You keep going down all the way to 2007, 2008 area, $4 billion. $4 billion, $4 billion, $4 billion, $5 billion. You can see a steady increase here. One last little note that I'd like to bring to everyone's attention. So 
if you watch Spirit Stock, Spirit Air System Stock like I do on a consistent basis, I saw this article that came out September 9th, 2020, which is almost a month ago at this point, where it states, Hedge funds are souring on Spirit Air Systems Holdings, Inc., SPR. All right. So that's what the title says. But when you go into the article and you start reading what it actually says, it's got this passage here that says, What does smart money think about Spirit Air Systems Holdings, Inc., which is on the New York Stock Exchange is SPR. Okay. It says, At Q2's end of 2020, a total of 37 of the hedge funds tracked by Insider Monkey were bullish on this stock, a change of minus 3% from the first quarter of 2020. On the other hand, there were a total of 31 hedge funds with a bullish position in SPR a year ago. With hedge funds capital changing hands, there exists an upper tier of key hedge fund managers who are upping their holdings significantly or already accumulated large positions. What is this telling us? Unless someone else can come in and make parts, make huge complex aerospace assemblies better than Spirit in a well in a more managed way, I mean, who's going to take over? You've seen that Spirit has gone they've increased their revenues year in, year out, year in, year out. You saw just last year they were trading at $92, $100 a share. $100 a share. You're looking at a gigantic market cap. You're looking at 4 to 5x potential in this stock. And I believe, I sincerely believe that Spirit stock in a couple years, maybe even next year, two years, you're going to wish you could have bought at these prices. I mean, just last year they made $931 million in revenue. That's half their market cap right now. Income before extraordinaries was $530.1 million. And you've got certain depreciation, depletion, and amortization, your EBIT score, you know, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, a $2 billion valuation on this company is just too, way, way too low, even in the pandemic that we're in currently. And that's why I'm, I won't be buying shares today, and I won't be buying shares tomorrow, which is October 2nd. But October 5th, October 6th, as long as Spirit does not go up to $22, $23, as long as it stays around 20 or below, I will be purchasing shares after they dump those shares on the market. For the offering. Because it's just a steal. It's such, such a deal right now. You could buy Boeing. I don't plan to. Boeing has a larger market cap. Takes more money to change it. And the highest Boeing ever got was around 420 440 a share, I believe. Which offers 3x potential. There's more value in Spirit stock. If Boeing goes back to previous levels, returns to previous levels, then so will Spirit. Spirit is going to follow whatever Boeing does. And you can see that by the charts from the last six months, eight months. Whenever Boeing shoots up, gets spikes up, so does Spirit. So does Bombardier. But I wouldn't I'm not going to invest in Bombardier right now. I haven't done enough research on Bombardier. If I find out more about Bombardier, I know Bombardier is trading at twenty six cents right now. Could be a steal as well. I just I'm not I'm not sold on them yet. But Spirit Air Systems, I am sold on. They're a gigantic company. They I mean their management is fantastic. They they hold so much weight and hold so much power within the aerospace sector. Because they, I mean, they can just get work from Boeing. They can get a PO from Boeing and offload it for less money to almost any second tier supplier that would, that's hungry for work, especially right now, that's just trying to stay, stay afloat. I mean, Spirit holds so much power within the, the, the aerospace supplier sector. I mean, they're, they're basically number one, if not number two, number three. But they're one of the, 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 if you ask me, they're the preeminent supplier to Boeing. I mean, they make the entire 737 MAX fuselage. So if the 737 MAX does come into fruition, does return to service soon, or eventually, Spirit will be just fine. And even if it doesn't, they could switch their, they could switch their priorities around and still probably be all right. You can see they have got 2.3 billion in cash. They, they're hemorrhaging three to four hundred million per quarter right now. So if nothing changes, yeah, in three years, two years, yeah, they might be in big trouble. Unless they can do some more offerings, they can shut some more places down to stop hemorrh hemorrhaging as much cash. But the bottom line is they're set up really, really well for pandemic. They just are. I mean, their cash on hand sets them up. Their cash and short-term investments secures their spot within the aerospace sector. There will be no one taking over what Spirit does, which is a very, very specialized industrial 
sector. I mean, Spirit, you can't just copy this. You, like aerospace is one of the hardest sectors to get into for a reason. It's hard to start an aerospace company. Whether you're an OEM, that you're designing your own aircraft, or whether you're just manufacturing parts, ask Elon Musk. Manufacturing is extremely, extremely undervalued. And in all reality, it's very hard. Man, uh, experimental manufacturing, I mean, Spirit gets into that all the time with Boeing. I mean, experimental manufacturing is one of the hardest thing, hardest jobs you can get into. Because there's so many different ways you can mess up a detail or an assembly. All right, guys. If you enjoyed the content that I provided to you about Spirit Air Systems as well as Boeing stock today, please give this video a like. Also, if you don't mind, subscribe for more content like this. Spirit Air Systems is just too big to fail. There's no one in the sector that can take over the complex assemblies and the propulsion, the wings, fuselage. There's no one that can take over this domestically or internationally. There's too much machinery. There's too much technical specialized products, items, tooling, all of these, etc., that are needed to build all these parts, build conforming aerospace products. And Spirit just has too much power in the game. $2 billion valuation, it's like stealing money. That being said, I am not a financial advisor, so do your own research. Like I said, give me a subscribe if you like this content. I plan on providing many, many more videos with undervalued stocks where, who knows, you can make a lot of money if you decide to do your own research and you agree with me. Alrighty. I appreciate your watching. Give me a like. Give me a subscribe. Happy investing, guys.